mental fatigue, how to deal with it. Let's talk about it. What's good, YouTube? I'm Dewan. If you're new to my channel, if you're just watching this video, subscribe. Recently, I got hit up on my Twitter again. What's happening? If you're not following my Twitter, you should. Delight 330 But anyway, Diddly Dude hit me up on Twitter. He said, how do you deal with mental fatigue while you're studying? Woo! I think there comes a point in everyone's life when you're learning a new subject, language, topic, whether you're in college, studying for IT certification, no matter what, where you just get burnt out. Not only do you get burnt out, but you question your very existence. <laughs> I think a few months ago, everybody was making videos like, am I smart enough to be in IT? Or am I good enough to be a network engineer? And all that good stuff. Learning these topics will push you beyond where you are. That's the purpose of learning. So the first thing I want to say is, when you find yourself reaching that point of mental fatigue, take a step back, take a break. I don't mean a day, two days, three days. I mean five minutes and ask yourself, why are you doing this? Are you doing it because of employment? Are you doing this because of school? Are you doing this because you want to get a degree, which is school? Are you doing this because of you want a new job? Are you doing this just because you want to learn something new? Are you doing this because this is your, it's your passion? Are you doing this to better the life for you and your family? Why are you doing this? Establish your why. And if you can't find your why, it's definitely going to be hard to come out of that mental fatigue. Because we all get to a breaking point where we just want to quit, we want to give up. Me learning Java, I keep talking about this, but... There's been about three or four times where I've reached a point of mental fatigue. And with Java, this was one of those times. The reason why I reached that point with Java, which I'm not there now. I'm good. I'm learning. And I'm, I'm so excited about the future. It's crazy. But the reason why is when I first started learning, I was watching these videos. And these videos, I'm not saying where I found the videos from, but these videos are something that I had to watch for the course that I'm in. And they were so, just like everything in the past that I've seen when it comes to teaching you programming. Oftentimes, when people teach you programming, they teach you about the language. So Java being an object-oriented language, everybody wants to teach you about the classes, integers, the floats, the doubles, all that stuff when it comes to writing a Java program. But nobody shows you a Java program completed or gives you this the functions of a completed Java program. So you don't have a big picture idea in the beginning. So it can be overwhelming. Like trying to pick up a book and learn French. It's hard. But if you look at something like Rosetta Stone, it gives you pictures, then the corresponding French word to go with that picture, it makes it a little easier. So if you reach that point of mental fatigue, ask yourself why. Number one. Number two, what are you using to learn? Once you find out your why, what are you using to learn? Maybe the textbooks, the videos that you're watching. Well, let me start over. If you're reading books and it's just not clicking, maybe watch videos. And if you're watching videos and it's not clicking, maybe read a book. And if you're reading a book and the person that wrote the book, it isn't written well, maybe find another book. There's so many different ways to get to the path of success. And sometimes you're going to have to find different routes to get there. So along with my Java journey, like I mentioned before with the, with the videos, they were overwhelming. And so what I did was I found a book um, by Cybex. And that book was awesome. But then it got too technical. And so the author actually said this in her book. She said, if this book is too much for you, maybe you should get books A, B, and C. And one of those books was Java for Dummies. When it comes to programming, programming made me feel like a dummy. So what I did was I humbled myself, bought a Java for Dummy book. And ever since then, 
it's been phenomenal. So what I'm telling you is that find your why. Look at what you're using to learn that subject and ask yourself, is this working for me? If not, find something else. The next thing I want to say is that maybe you're learning too fast. Sometimes we want to hit the highway at 90 miles per hour and don't realize, you know, our car wasn't built for that. Every car doesn't go zero to 60. Sometimes you have to go zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30, 40. You get my point. So what I'm saying is take a step back, take that five minutes and ask yourself, am I learning this too fast? Did I miss some parts on my journey to learning this? Maybe you need to review some topics because it's easy to dive in and say, I got this when you're configuring port security or you're configuring um, device security and then you start configuring routes or you actually have to subnet networks or you have to configure extended ACLs on discontiguous networks. Take your time. Don't be in a hurry to get to the top. Do not burn yourself out. Man, yeah, that's it. With learning so fast, you can burn yourself out and reach mental fatigue. Take it one day at a time. When I say lab every day, hashtag below, what I mean is that take five minutes, take 10 minutes, take 15 minutes. Take your time. Let your life be a constant journey, progression of learning. You should not be in a hurry to get certification X, Y, Z or A, B, C. Sometimes learning takes time. Master the CCNA level. Master that. I mean, master it. What's wrong with being the best CCNA and then becoming the best CCMP and then mastering the CCIE? If it takes you 10 years, trust me. A 10-year proven CCIE is everything, is everything. A three-year CCIE has a long way to go and so much to learn. The reason why I say that, and I'm going to be personal, I went straight from my CCNA to my CCMP to realize that I knew nothing about configuring a for real firewall or doing voice networks. And so I had to slow down because I was going to go straight for the CCIE. But then it was like, I don't want to be a CCIE on paper. I'm just being totally honest with you. So for me, when people say, are you going to get your CCIE? Yeah, but I'm in no hurry. I'm in no hurry because I want to be for real great at what I do. And the best way to be great at what I do is to help you learn it, help someone else learn it. And learn it for myself on all aspects when it comes to configuring a network. Because a network is an internet of things in 2017, if you did not know. And if I can't configure all those things on the network, I can't truly call myself a CCIE. Just being honest. So, I'm willing to slow down, put in the work, and get there. Hmm. Yeah. So... To diddly do fam, great question. I appreciate that question. If you are in a state of mental fatigue, pull yourself out. Ask yourself why. Evaluate your learning materials. Take your time, slow down, and realize that you got this. It may not be going how you want it. You may not be learning it as quick as you think you should. Last, no, one more thing. Do not compare your journey to someone else's. That is so important. You can't look at your peripherals. Look straight ahead because your journey is the only journey that should matter to you. Be inspired by others around you, but do not be discouraged. Do not let someone else's journey be the reason why you reach the state of not believing in yourself and of giving up and mental fatigue. Believe in yourself, put in the work, and keep pushing and embrace that journey. I'm Dewan. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, subscribe. And if you got questions, leave them in the comment section below. Like this video. I thank you all for viewing and I'm out.